Welcome guys, I am so glad you made it this far. This is the final episode in the tutorial. We are going to get down and end this game. So if you follow or are following along in the last episode, we got this far. Um, we got Mario moving, landing on stuff, but we need him to take out these coins because that's the point of this mini game is he's trying to collect as many coins as possible. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to handle the collision with the coins. To do that, you need to go to your physics.js file and scroll down to here where we have collision handling. So handle collision. What I want to do is just go ahead and let's create a, another if check. We'll be able to check if entity dot type is equal to coin. Then what we need to do is we need to handle it. So essentially all we're going to do is we are going to pop off the coin that he collides with out of the array of coins that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to namespace some things here. I'm going to say coins array is equal to data dot entities dot coins array var sorry var coin sound is equal to entity dot sound dot clone node again the reason why is because we want to be able to have multiple coin sounds in one if they're hit you know in the same frame the sound needs to play all the way till the end and then I need to get the index. So let's see, coins array dot index of. So this is a nice little method on the array prototype again that will actually give us the location of our entity inside of that array. And then all we have to do is simply do coin sound dot play and coins array dot splice what splice does is it creates a new array or it returns a new array that takes out whatever we tell it so I'm going to say index and one so I'm splicing I'm taking out that index and it's just going expanding for one so we're just taking out that sole one okay Let's save that and see if it is working correctly. I don't know. Let's check. Jump. Boom. Okay, it's not working. Let's hit F12. See what's going on here. We getting an error? No, we're not. Let's go to our physics. And let's see here. Uh, let's scroll down here in our sources to get here you can just press control O and type in the name of the file that you're searching for and I am saying if entity dot type is equal to coin do we have a type on the coin let's go back and check on our coin uh, yes there is that okay uh, we have a coin sound is it making a coin sound Nope, it's not. So I wonder if it's not hitting. It's not. Oh, let me refresh. Okay, yeah, it's still not working. Okay. Uh, let's just throw in a. Let's see. Coins array. Oh, duh. Okay. Yes, we are not doing that correctly. We need to go up to detection and pass in our array of, in our physics file here. It's handling collision, but look, we never check for coin collision, which is dumb because we need to. <laughs> So we're going to do it the same way that we do this walls array. We just do data dot 
entities dot coins array dot for each callback function it's a coin and all we're doing is entity collision check and we're passing the coin save that and now it should be working the way we we're expecting it okay um take out any breakpoints we might have had run it okay moving moving jump boom, 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 boom. look at that okay are we getting the sound yep we got that jump sound and then the coin sound awesome last thing we need to do is we need to put a little score and the amount of coins and add up the coins that we're getting so like a scorekeeper type thing so let's go to entities here and inside of our helpers let's create a score class i'll just come to the bottom here do score is equal to a function we need to just pass in an x and a y oh my gosh there we go and i'm gonna say we can do this dot value is equal to zero. I'll do this dot x is equal to x. So the location that we're wanting to place the score with those two, let's do this dot size. So this is going to be text that we're writing out. So let's do 25 pixels. It needs to be in string format like that because the context that we use, the canvas context API, takes it as a string. We need to choose which font, which we loaded this in our style sheet, it's pixel emulator. And lastly, we can just place the color that we want the font as a string of white. Okay, perfect. Let's go to the top of this entities file where we can create our score um just uh we can place him let's say right here our score is equal to new entities dot helpers dot score and the position at 290 and 70. save that now we need to just go ahead and make sure that we add that to our array here so data or object sorry just like that perfect and lastly all we need to do is make sure that when we collide with a coin we update the value of that score so actually earlier on we put uh, coins on our jack character if you want you can we can take that out we don't need that because now we have a score object. So on physics here, when we detect that it is a coin right in here, we can just go data dot entities dot uh, val uh, data dot entities dot score dot value is equal to plus equal one. So we add it one every time it collides with one. And lastly, we need to go to our render and we need to draw text. So drawing text is a little bit different than an entity. So we can make a helper method to help us draw text to the screen. So we can do draw text as a function that we pass in the text that we're writing and the context that we're writing it to. Ah. Why is my shift not working? It's really annoying. Okay. We can do context.font, set that equal to text.size plus a string space plus text.font. So just the way the context API works is it takes a size and 
as a string and then the font that you're using as a string. We'll need to do context of fill style equals text dot color. So that's one of the attributes we can change that way. And then context dot fill text. And we will, this is what we're writing to. So I'll say coins space plus the text dot value. So that's going to be our score that we're really passing in here. Um, text dot x text dot y. So this tells it the position in there. Okay. So that's one attribute, one argument we pass in. There's another, and there's another parameter. And last thing we need to do is we can just come right into here and I can say render dot helpers dot draw text and I need to pass in data dot entities dot score and of course the foreground canvas or context let's save and let's uh, turn up the volume here and give it a go and see how we did okay I will hard refresh Boom, look at that, we got coins at the top and now it should add up automatically when we get one. So we got two, eight, nine, 10, 15, 17. There it is guys. That is how you do it. That is a little version of like a Mario type underground world where he collects coins. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it was quite a bit of work. But we got through it, and I hope you have a greater understanding of some of the programming concepts that we covered, like state machines and working with the Canvas API um, and using the modular pattern. So that is it for me. If you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. If you like this tutorial, obviously I hope you did because you got this far to the last episode. Please, please share with anyone that you think might be interested in programming. It's a fun way to kind of get in. Um, I love hearing from you guys. So anyways, that is it. I will uh, see you guys in the next tutorial, whatever that might be later.